So I've been self-teaching mathematics from textbooks for the last three months straight, and this video is going to be an update on how that process is, uh, how that's going. So in learning math, there's kind of two main lines of thought you can take. One is the vibes and two is the rigor. So you can go for a vibes book, you can go for a rigorous book. You kind of have to have a synthesis of the two. So it's always best to have a good vibes -y book on the go while you're having some rigorous textbook as well. So I usually, if I get stuck on a rigorous textbook, I fall back to the vibes -y textbook. And the vibes -y textbook can be like a history or a autobiography or something of that sort. But you want something that's not too tough to get through and it's kind of story-like so you can pick it up quite easily because once you get into the dense math they kind of assume just like when you read a story you can kind of already understand the story because you're a human um when you're in a math textbook it's kind of like they're telling the story to a mathematician already so if you're not already a mathematician it's quite hard to pick up but you're a story reader so you can pick up the story and then that actually allows you to again get better at the reading of the rigorous textbook because you're kind of getting indoctrinated into the cult of learning mathematics from a math textbooks so if you ever get stuck on a math textbook make sure you have a vibesy math book as well on the go Go from rigor, then if you get stuck, back up, go to your history book or whatever about math, and then you can usually make progress that way. So how that applies to my life right now, I'm reading a few textbooks on the go as well as a few uh, vibesy books, but I'm reading a Mathematics, The Loss of Certainty by Morris Klein. Highly recommend it. Only if you have a little bit of mathematical experience. I started it before I had gone into second year university. And so I had, you know, first and second course calculus, but I didn't have like the, 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 the deeper math skills. So it kind of lost me a little bit. But now that I'm returning to it, now that I have more mathematics knowledge, it's a nice book. I'd say once you're a couple thousand hours into reading math, then you can kind of it's a good book, for me at least, but maybe you're, you're quick to the punch. And then for mathematics textbooks, I'm reading For All X by Open Logic Project, and I cannot recommend this book enough. It's a 10 out of 10 textbook. It takes you basically complete vibes, and it tells it to you like you're a human, not like you're a robot, and I cannot stress this enough. Best book ever. I read, I started with uh, Enderton's, I shall tell you a story in a second. Both little tippy. All kind of sketched out, it's like my fall. So when diving into mathematics, there's kind of three angles that you can take in a modern day. There's analysis, which is calculus, differential equations, and everything studying continuity. So it's continuous stuff. You're analyzing, you're analyzing movement kind of, like a, a flowy stuff. Then you have algebra, that's a study of discrete structures. Bing, bing, bop. You have things and you want to see how they relate to each other. And then you have logic kind of underpinning those two and that's more of a meta structure of all mathematics. You're studying how do we make theorems? What is a theorem? What is a proof? What constitutes a proof? How do we how do we make this so it's logically sound? And uh, those are kind of the three. And then there's geometry, which is something that's a little bit more neglected in the modern day curriculum than it used to be. It used to be like the math. Euclid used to be mathematics basically for a long time. And then that kind of isn't really emphasized as much, but geometry is a huge field now. It just is a lot more wiggity whack. I mean, I'm going to try to learn Euclidean geometry at some point, but that's kind of on the, the back burner for now. So we're doing analysis, algebra, logic. Those are the three attack vectors. So for analysis, I tried Abbott, real analysis, didn't like it too much. It's fine. It just felt like it kind of plucked stuff out of thin air. So it wasn't really, wasn't really vibing with it too, too much because it didn't motivate ideas and the axioms that it pulled upon were kind of, uh, I, I just, I didn't like it that much. Then there was a book I used from real analysis class that I hated. That was like last year was Ross, real, a theory of, not I forget, a theory of and not real analysis, the theory of calculus or something, didn't like that one that much. It had the yellow Springer book though, so it was kind of exciting to open, but when you opened it, it was kind of like, okay, yeah, it didn't feel like rigorous. It's like, if we're going rigorous, let's go rigorous, or let's not go rigorous at all. Which led me to Terence Tao, real analysis, which is very rigorous, but I didn't have the mathematical sauce requisite enough to really get through it, because he starts just with sets, and he starts defining numbers as like sets of sets and stuff, and it's just really, really heavy. So that was a bit tough to parse through, to be honest. And then now, finally, I've arrived at a book called uh, How We Got From There to Here. I was searching around online to find this book. Uh, it's an analysis book, How We Got From There to hear story of real analysis i think is what it's called and it basically just is just a vibe i read the first five pages i don't know about that yet that's going to start in about a month uh but super super vibesy on that front uh just really it's meant for the self-educator it's an open textbook um i haven't looked at too much but you know, take a look at it it's it's worded in such a way that it's talking to you as if you're a person not a robot which is i love algebra don't really have much plans on that front frankly next month we're starting a course with a buddy i met through discord shout out duncan he's doing a, I think a graduate level algebra course at his university and he's like hey talk you should try it with me i'm like okay sec um because <laughs> i've only done like one textbook on my own of abstract algebra so i don't know if i'm i'm ready to really tackle that tackle that beast but i think you know 
trial by fire, baby. Let's get tropical. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I think I can at least try some of the problems. It'll be fun. And then, you know, if, if it does work out, then, you know, you're really saucy with algebra. It'll be nice. And then logic's what I'm working on right now. So I tried, uh, I wanted to learn more logic because you dive into mathematical proofs and I didn't really have a firm basis for what they were. So uh, that's kind of the underpinning of math now. Logic. Logic's how you make theorems. It's how you derive stuff. It's the whole the whole structure, basically. You're studying the whole structure. And it turns out it's way more deep and I won't go into it, but the study of logic led to a ton of weird crap that we didn't think was going to happen. For example, Godel's incompleteness theorem. It's like, whoa, it's it's nuts. It's It kind of shows us that our whole system is kind of flawed. It's like, whoa, you can't really even reach certain things you want to reach with our our, our our entire system kind of like is inadequate. It's, it's damn. Anyway, that's logic and logic. I tried mathematical introduction to logic, hated it. It was my Enderton. Um, although I'm going to return to it now, I'm probably going to like it again because I didn't know any logic. So I, I started that, didn't like it. Then I went to friendly introduction to logic. That was better. That was better for sure, better, but still didn't like it that much. It was an online textbook, definitely better than the first one. That was more of a vibe. It was nicer to you, but it still didn't really have that sauce. Then I went to 4LX by Open Logic Project. It's a University of Calgary thing. I'll link it. 10 out of 10 textbook. I love the thing. So good. So good. It just talks to you like your person, motivates the ideas. And I would recommend reading a logic kind of history book as well, a history of mathematical logic. I, I don't know any books you recommend, but I was reading Morris Klein's Mathematics Law of certainty and that was a really good book because it kind of coincided with the mathematical logics theory and how mathematics kind of blew up back in like 1910 it's like whoa it's kind of heavy heavy stuff there uh, mathematical logic is that so i'm almost done that book then we're gonna move on to analysis book and then the algebra course in about a month and that's gonna be that's kind of the update that's the update a lot of grinding the one thing i gotta say is just keep on keep being steady and if you're if you're learning math yourself just keep on trudging because it's eventually stuff makes sense stuff that didn't make sense to me at all like a year ago was starting to like oh it just makes it's like becomes just trivial and it's like why did I get this earlier? It just takes time. It just takes time. Just dipping your toe in the sauce and eventually um, it'll seep in. So that's it for this one. It's getting dark. So without further ado, take it easy. I love you. Godspeed. And I'll see you in the next one, which is going to be tomorrow or the next day. English speaking for that. Math, boys.